Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner. Let's take a look at this excision specimen of a very dark lesion from the plantar foot of a 60-year-old man. Uh, you can see it's uh, sectioned into multiple pieces here. Uh, this is the area we're going to take a look at first. Look at how much dark pigment there is here. So clearly this is a proliferation of melanocytes. Now, if you've watched some of my other videos, you know that melanocytes normally have a gray uh, or gray to pink cytoplasm that's usually not very pigmented. However, as with all rules, there are some exceptions. Here you can see that these melanocytes aren't, um, aren't highly pigmented, but up here, these are. So usually very darkly pigmented um, cells in the epidermis are gonna be keratinocytes, and in the dermis are gonna be melanophages. These actually down here, probably most of these guys that are very dark are actually melanophages. But these dark cells up here, they're actually heavily pigmented melanocytes. So this is a, a melanocytic lesion. It's very pigmented. And look what's happening here. You can see the melanocytes are making nests here. And then here, they're mostly in kind of single cells. And they are so numerous that the epidermis is splitting away and making almost a blister um, that's between the epidermis and the dermis. Now, this is not a real blister in the patient. It's an artifact, okay? This artifactual separation of the epidermis from the dermis is a really important clue uh, for confluent growth of melanocytes, okay? So we kind of jokingly call this a melanocytic blister because it looks kind of like a blister. But what happens is that the melanocytes here have grown so numerous along the basal layer of the epidermis that they've basically pushed out of the way all of the normal basal keratinocytes that have the hemidesmosomes that tie them on to the ba uh, basement membrane underneath and keep the epidermis stuck down to the dermis. When we process the tissue, the shrinking artifact, or sorry, the shrinking and the kind of forces put on the tissue during the fixation process causes the tissue to pull away, the epidermis to pull away and break free from the dermis. Now, I never have figured out why this doesn't actually happen in vivo in the patient's body because you don't usually see a blistered melanocytic lesions, um, at least I've not, uh, not very often, but, but in uh, microscopically, we do see this on a relatively regular basis. And so this, what this tells me is when there's this blistered looking separation or as uh, one of my mentors, Bruce Smoller, like to say this unzipping effect, that the epidermis is being unzipped from the dermis by a bunch of melanocytes, that is worrisome for melanoma because it's a sign that the melanocytes are growing and replacing the basal layer, and that's a phenomenon that we call confluent growth or confluence. And if you need a refresher on all of the different terms we talk about when we're looking at uh, melanocytic lesions and deciding nevus versus melanoma. I've got a full length video about nevi and another one about uh, melanoma on my YouTube channel and I'll put a link uh, down below uh, in the video description or the comments. Okay, so uh, confluence is one of these things we talk about a lot. It is a, a good sign for melanoma malignancy rather than benign nevus. And we talk about it a lot in Dermpath, but I'll tell you what, the most of the time, really good confluent growth is pretty hard to come by, even in melanomas. I would say that the majority of melanomas I see in my practice, and I've seen quite a few melanomas, don't have really true confluent growth where the whole basal layer is replaced by melanocytes. The best exception, the best time that you actually do see it is in acral melanoma. So that's what this is. This is an acral lentiginous melanoma. And it's lentiginous because it's predominantly single cell growth along the dermal epidermal junction, replacing the basal keratinocytes. Look again, you get some more of that blister artifact. Now, there are times where you can have artifactual separation or tearing of the tissue in benign nevi. So just because you see this blister doesn't mean instantly that something's melanoma, but I look really closely at the lesion whenever I see this phenomenon, this unzipping of the epidermis from the dermis because it's a clue for confluent growth, okay? So this is a nice example of confluence. And look, when we go along here, the entire basal layer of the epidermis is replaced by melanocytes. They're large and atypical. You can see here, they're the very atypical. They're large, they have big nucleoli. And look what else they do. Not only do they replace the dermal epidermal junction, uh, they also extend down reedy and up in between reedy. Up and down in between the reedy, that's another good sign for confluence. A lot of times, nevi can be very busy and have single cells down the tips of reedy, but you have relative sparing of the inter-reedy space where there's very few melanocytes. But here we see a lot of melanocytes going in between the reedy, 
up and down from, from reedy to reedy. The other really uh, useful clue to find confluent growth is looking at adnexal structures. And particularly, again, the time that you really see this is in acral lentiginous melanomas like this one, where you often see a lot of atypical melanocytes spreading way down the eccrine ducts. So there's a little bit back there, but here's a really good example. You can see, again, the confluent growth of atypical large melanocytes here. And look what they're doing. They're spreading down this sweat duct. How do I know this is an eccrine duct? Look at that little pink, tiny little place in the center. There should be a little lumen there. We're, we're not quite seeing it because the, the center of lumen is so crunched. But that little pale space with a little pink around it, in the middle of these, if you did an immunostain, these are keratinocytes here, part of the eccrine duct epithelial cells. These bigger cells out here, and here you can see they have more gray cytoplasm rather than that heavily pigmented cytoplasm. These are atypical melanocytes completely replacing the basal layer of the eccrine duct. And oftentimes, and so if you did immunostains, you could see SOX10 or MART1 would stain these cells strongly, but be negative here in these cells. Keratin would stain these cells, but be negative out here in the melanoma cells, okay? So um, when I see atypical melanocytes spreading as single cells way down eccrine ducts, that is a very worrisome sign for melanoma. And sometimes in the absence of good confluence up in the epidermis, finding this finding in the duct can be enough to push me over the edge and call something a melanoma. You can sometimes see nests um, in a nevus. You can see nests occasionally in the superficial part of a sweat duct or a hair follicle. But seeing atypical melanocytes spread down the sweat duct, particularly in acral lesions, um, is a very worrisome sign. Okay, let's see what else we can show you about this case. Um, note that I haven't really talked about pagetoid spread yet. Pagetoid spread is here. These guys here are pagetoid melanocytes. And melanomas often have pagetoid melanocytes, but you know what? Acral nevi, benign acral nevi can look kind of weird. They can have bigger nuclei and they can have pagetoid melanocytes as well. So pagetoid spread by itself in acral skin doesn't definitively uh, make a diagnosis of melanoma. What I really like to see is severe nuclear atypia and confluent growth. Ideally, I like to see those two things together. Not every case works that way. Let's look at some other examples here. Look at this. You can barely tell, but this is actually an eccrine duct that's almost completely replaced by melanoma cells. Okay. If you're having trouble, again, you can do a, a melanocyte stain and a keratin stain, and you'll be able to tell that there are keratinocytes there. Let's look elsewhere in the lesion here and see if there's another, I think there's another area over here I wanted to talk about. Now look, what about this? I think that this is a benign acral nevus here in the dermis. So whether this melanoma grew from the nevus or just happened to arise next door to it in, uh, incidentally, I don't know. But I think that this part right here is benign nevus. Over top, I think we've got melanoma. You can't really see um, excellent confluent growth here. There's, there's some melanocytes in between the reedy, these dark pigmented guys here but they're not fully confluent. There is pagetoid spread and there is nuclear atypia. So, you know, sometimes acral uh, melanocytic lesions can get kind of uh, sparsely cellular towards the periphery. I'm, I'm sorry, acral melanomas can get kind of sparsely cellular towards the periphery. And so that's why I'm really cautious in acral nevi. Um, I'll accept some kind of pagetoid spread and some weird things, but the most important thing that I like to know in an acral melanocytic lesion is the clinical information. How big is the lesion? I have made a diagnosis of very small acral melanoma occasionally, but not often. I would say that most of the acral melanomas I've seen were large lesions, very dark, very worrisome clinically. So if I see a light lesion and I'm a little bit worried about it, but clinically it's a three millimeter or a four millimeter black papule on the sole of the foot, the chances are that's probably a benign nevus, okay? Again, I've seen exceptions, but but that's what's really important. So um, if you're a dermatologist watching this, getting a clinical picture and providing that information to your dermatopathologist can be exceptionally helpful um, in helping us know if we see something kind of unusual in a melanocytic lesion on acral skin, how much to worry about. Okay, the other thing that a lot of people talk about is the pigment. Pigment from the melanoma or from melanocytic lesions in acral skin often gets up into the stratum corneum, okay? And if you're a, der a dermatologist, will look at um, acral melanocytic lesions and look under dermoscopy and try to see if the pigment is in the furrows or the ridges, okay? 
So in acral nevi, oftentimes the pigment is confined to these little depressions, the, the furrows, but is not up in between on these ridges. But here you can see there's pigment both in the stratum corneum, in these, these dips, the depressions, the furrows, and also up here in the ridges. And I think that that corresponds to basically the fact that the melanocytes are growing up in between the reedy into the, the, uh, the inner reedy space over the papillary dermis. And then pigment from those melanocytes is getting pushed up into the epidermis um, over time. And I, I think that that's why that this occurs. So seeing a pigment spread um, uh, in both the furrows and the ridges can be a helpful clue uh, to support a diagnosis of melanoma. So here again, the, the atypical melanocytes. So here we have a melanoma in situ in the epidermis. The dermal stuff here, I think, is all melanoma. Look what happens here. How interesting. The neve, I'm sorry, did I say melanoma? I meant the dermal stuff, I believe, is all nevus here. The junctional stuff, the intraepidermal stuff, melanoma in situ. And then over here, all of a sudden, the nevus kind of stops. And you've got this zone of dense fibrosis. And look at the collagen pattern here. This collagen is really dense and kind of almost homogenous. It looks very different from the reticular dermal collagen down here, and it looks different from normal papillary dermis. Let's see if we have any normal papillary dermis. Here's normal, this very fine, delicate collagen. All of a sudden, this collagen has been replaced with this dense sclerotic collagen. There's also a lot of pigment drop out here. I think that this is some regression change. So this is, I think, what's happened is that the melanoma is growing here. I believe these cells here probably represent invasive melanoma. It can be really hard to tell what's invasive melanoma and what's just the background melanophage. Doing an immunostain, either MART1 or SOX10, using a red chromogen rather than brown. Brown obviously would be very hard to interpret here because it looks a lot like the melanin. But doing an immunostain for a MART or SOX can help you tell which cells in the dermis actually are true melanocytes. And that can be uh, helpful if you're having trouble measuring a Breslow thickness on a lesion like this. Um, again, the other complication is deciding if this stuff is nevus or melanoma. And that can be very challenging even for experts to decide sometimes. I really believe the growth pattern of this, the way that it trickles down and matures, trickles in between dermal collagen, that stuff to me supports benign nevus. But I think where we were over here with all this kind of regression like fibrosis in the background and atypical melanocytes, heavily pigmented, many of them in the dermis, I believe that that's probably the melanoma invading. So I would regard this as an invasive melanoma, acral lentiginous type with a background nevus. And it shows us uh, a nice example of confluent growth with that unzipping artifact, a nice example of extension of uh, confluent atypical melanocytes down at nexal structures like the eccrine ducts. And of course, we won't see hair follicles here because we're on um, the plantar surface of the foot and there are no hair follicles there. You can see here a lot better. This is the, the lumen of the eccrine duct and look what we see, atypical melanocytes spreading down the duct. Now, how do we know this is a melanocyte? Look at the, the cytoplasm is clinging to the nucleus and the vacuole is around the outside. And uh, if you've watched my short video on how to tell melanocytes from keratinocytes, you'll know that when the nucleus has a glob of cytoplasm stuck to it and a vacuole on the outside, that supports a melanocyte usually. And if you have a vacuole with a naked nucleus in the middle, that is going to be normally a keratinocyte. These guys right here where the nucleus is either either naked and floating in the middle or kind of off to one side, but totally a space with a, a bare naked nucleus. Usually those are keratinocytes. Keratinocytes get that uh, kind of an artifact, but you can go watch that video if you want more uh, explanation there. So acral lentiginous melanoma with nevus. Uh, these uh, can occur in uh, patients uh, who are white and have light skin or, um, uh, and low pigment, but also Acral melanomas, it's very important to remember, they are the most common type of melanoma that are seen in um, patients with dark skin types, uh, African-Americans and other darkly pigmented patients who don't have, a, who have a very low risk of melanoma overall, but when they do get melanoma, the usual place they get it is on acral skin and particularly under the nails, the subungual area, under the, the thumbnail or the great toe, the big toe, 
is a common place and also on the acral skin. So it's really important to remember that darkly pigmented patients can get melanoma and the acral site is where they often get it. But I would say that most of the acral melanomas I've seen are actually in white patients just because melanoma is so much more common in white patients. And I think this down here, although again, it can be hard to tell, I think that these atypical melanocytes here are probably part of the melanoma, not the background nevus. Sometimes you can use things like uh, KI-67 and MART-1 double-labeled immunostain to try to decide. Sometimes people use VBG elastic stain to try to look at the pattern of elastic fibers and decide what represents invasive melanoma versus background nevus. I personally don't have a ton of experience with that and I find it a little challenging to interpret. Um, if you find mitotic activity, obviously that would be very helpful. Finding uh, nucleoli deep down in the dermal portion of uh, the melanocytic lesion is a sign that, that worries me for melanoma. And also the newer immunostain PRAME, P-R-A-M-E, um, I just recently started uh, using that in the past few months and I'm still gaining some experience with it. It's not a perfect stain, but it can be helpful. And I've seen a couple times already where it can be really helpful in staining the melanoma in situ and the invasive melanoma, but being negative or very weak or focal in the background benign nevus. So that's a kind of cool stain if you uh, have a chance to, to try that out. Um, uh, it can be helpful in, in some cases at least. So acral lentiginous melanoma, a very characteristic classic example showing full-blown confluence and invasion into the dermis. And I hope that you found that uh, helpful and interesting. And uh, thanks for watching.